Hi, this is Jeremy Bryden for Core S Squared Software Solutions. Today I'll be introducing uh, the last little new features that we have in our final version of the Core Codex Alpha. Uh, essentially the big changes from the uh, early alpha, which I think was a 0.2, and this late stage alpha is we have a lot more feature completion that orients around um, developer tools, helpful judge outputs, and then also user preferences and user information. So in the top right, you'll notice that I'm logged in under Jeremy Brighton. I have my correct uh, total user score, which is 35. If we click that, we'll go ahead and see some statistics on my solutions, as well as uh, statistics compared to other users. Uh, on the right, you'll see user trophies, which are little achievements that you could earn. If we click on learn more about achievements, you could see that there's about um, probably two dozen uh, little trophies people can earn. Uh, a lot of them are very simple things, such as pro badge, get more than you know 250 points. Uh, and some of these are a little bit more complex and difficult to get, such as uh, forever alone, uh, fail c three consecutive problems. Um, it might sound like a negative thing, but it's actually a great way to entice students to just keep trying, uh, even if they're screwing up or they're on a run. So for example, there's the uh, baby steps, just solve one problem. The idea is, is that you're getting students interested and really enticed about solving problems, getting immediate rewards, and not only getting immediate rewards, but also being able to show it off to your friends, and if the professor chooses to, they could go ahead and create a, uh, a public rank system so students can compare and contrast uh, their solutions. If you hit preferences, we can now change uh, our passwords. We could change the little user icons. Uh, in the future, I'll allow people to upload icons. On the very bottom, there's a delete account. Uh, it's a deep delete, meaning we delete all solutions given by that user, uh, as well as we delete any sort of records. The, the main reason why is, is that we understand that uh, some people don't want their uh, code saved on any sort of uh, repository on the net, especially for these kind of environments where uh, people really enjoy the competitiveness. Um, so yeah, we created that little feature. If you'd like, go ahead and jump in there. Uh, right now I clicked on programming challenges. We have five major programming challenge groups. Uh, in total, I think we have about uh, 20 programming challenges themselves. Every day we're adding a few. Uh, the first to third is just a programming practice challenges for Python. Uh, the fourth one is a couple of ACM collegiate challenges that I've taken and modified myself. And the last one are user, uh, excuse me, Euler challenges, which come from the online Euler competitive programming environment. Uh, and again, those are changed uh, to fit certain needs of core codex. So if we click the first challenge, you'll see that the user interface has kind of been upgraded. Instead of just a title and a description, now we tell the user the difficulty, the points they could earn, whether or not they themselves completed it, as well as, and this is a very helpful feature uh, to help students that feel sometimes intimidated by work, is the attempts and a solution, valid solutions accepted bar graphs. So essentially, uh, attempts over all users is just a percentage of users that have at least even tried. And solved over all attempts is the number of people who have solved the problem versus uh, those who have actually just attempted. So usually, if, uh, if a user wants to find a very simple problem, they want to go for uh, a bar graph that's high for both of those. If someone wants a challenge, they look for one that has a lot of attempts but very little solved uh, solutions. Etc. So it's just a very helpful tool to kind of maybe gauge. Uh, and it's also helpful for professors to see these kind of statistics. Here I went ahead and uh, selected the first challenge, which is Hello World. Essentially, the user just needs to write a Python program that prints out the string to standard output, Hello World. Uh, classic ComSci 101 kind of stuff. You can see also that we, we give the user some starter code right here, and it's also syntax highlighted. So we really try to help those who are new to programming uh, to maybe pick out the keywords, understand why is it that these keywords are green and these other things are red. Oh, that's because def and print are keywords to the Python language, while the red means it's a string literal. Uh, we really go out of our way to give every possible chance to the user to really understand the programming challenge, as well as kind of learn on their own. Uh, and here we have some public statistics, again, to help users understand the difficulty of the problem, uh, you know, take away as many barriers as, as possible. So the top bar graph just shows uh, common errors. There's uh, nine error descriptions. Here we could see that out of all the submissions, only 10% were accepted. 
Uh, about 35% had runtime errors, 35% had results that didn't match, uh, about 2% had formatting errors, etc. So users can look at that. Uh, for those that were accepted solutions, on the bottom right you'll see the runtimes. Looks like everything here is about under half a second. And on the left you see languages used. It's all the same color because Python is the only valid language in our system. Uh, we could go ahead and look also at our own solution history. Uh, all solutions are always private. No one gets to see anyone else's source code unless they explicitly share it. And we could see that I have solved it in the past, uh, but my most recent submissions failed. So sometimes users will try to uh, improve on their own code. So even though it's solved, we allow them to resubmit, experiment, and see uh, if they could get a faster runtime or less memory usage. Uh, and you could see here that um, the originally submitted code was saved. The output against the sample input and outputs were generated and saved as well. So there's a bit of helpful information to help them um, develop better code. Here I clicked on Submit Solution, so I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, solve this programming challenge. Uh, and what's interesting is, is that we created a Ajax-based uh, Python editor with syntax highlighting at runtime. Uh, <laughs> long story short, it just means that we do syntax highlighting um, within the website, so it's kind of a neat little feature that users can use. Uh, to develop code and really help them understand what they're writing rather than kind of feeling in the dark and submitting uh, code that might not even compile. So here we hit submit code. Here we see that it was accepted and the reason why is I fulfilled the needs of the challenge. We could go back to challenge description, we could go back to the challenge group, and we could go back to all of the challenges. Uh, a couple of these have been taken from other websites, um, but we've really tried to emphasize on code quality rather than just uh, trying to solve a given problem. Uh, Core Codex is in the business of helping students and users learn. We're not in the business of really trying to write the most extreme challenge programming difficult thing you've ever seen in your life. Um, but for those that are interested in high-end programming challenges, we've created a few and we've balanced it between difficulty and uh, constraints of good quality code. So basically, what that means is, um, for example, prime factors. You're supposed to factor primes, which is computationally intense. And instead of just asking for one specific number, so the user could theoretically cheat, meaning they could just compute it beforehand and then print it back out, we actually tell them that we have a hidden input set, and they're going to have to solve that on their own and there's no way they're going to get their hands on that input set. So we have some really high numbers. We force them to write very optimal code. We force them to be intelligent about algorithms. Uh, essentially, all of the programming challenges you see on this entire website uh, do not allow you to do brute force solutions, because if you were to do brute force, it would run over the, the memory limit or the time limit. So we really, really try to force users to be intelligent about the way they code. Um, if we go back to the home page, you'll see that there's also a new leaderboard, which is uh, the last of the big alpha features. So here we rank people based on user scores, the number of completed challenges and achievements. Uh, these lists are generally the same people, uh, since uh, scores, completed challenges, and achievements go hand in hand. Um, but it'll just be another great way to entice students to try their best and uh, try to compete against one another. Uh, in beta, you could look forward to more um, professor tools. So, for example, professors will be able to create new challenge groups, uh, manage private accounts. Um, so that way, uh, professors can feel comfortable about submitting challenges without releasing them to the public. And then also, students can feel more comfortable um, writing code without feeling as though others are going to judge them. Uh, only the TAs and the professors will have access so those kind of features. This is Jeremy Bryden. Uh, I hope you find Core Codex interesting. Please visit us at corecodex.com.